Hey everybody, it's Greg Rice. We're here in the Bucket, Pawtucket, Rhode Island. And today's video is a little bit different. It's about a current event that you may know about. It's the Woonsockets beautiful Sacred Heart Church that we're going to hopefully renovate into 33 market rate apartment units. Now this will not be low income housing. Woonsocket has one of the highest percentages of per capita low income subsidized renters. And we're trying to offset that. And we're going to bring in some fresh blood, some market rate units. These are going to be $1,500 to $2,000 rents. And these folks will be working professionals that will contribute to the local economy, have some disposable income to patronize the local businesses. So we met with the council last night to request a 12-year tax agreement. Now, since it's not in the downtown district, it doesn't have a formal application process. It's more informal. And that's what we did last night was a presentation to go over our goals, our visions for this church and what is needed with this tax agreement in order to get this to make sense. So the agreement was as follows, a three year tax freeze. So year one, year two and year three, it's a freeze. And since it's a church, churches don't pay any taxes, the diocese that is, so it would be no taxes for three years. And this would help offset the construction period. The construction period is the toughest for any investor because there's no income potential. There's no money that can come in at all because you're creating the apartments. So that worked out nice. And then over the next nine years, years four to 12, it would be an 11.1%, 11.11 to be specific, of the assessed value each year. Up until the 12th year, you hit that 100% mark of the new assessed value of the structure. And we thought that it was a pretty fair ask. It wasn't too aggressive. It's mirroring the downtown district's already adopted application structure, but it was not received as well. One counselor specifically said he did not like the fact that this would get a tax treaty and not create any jobs. This wouldn't directly create a job. And that is partially true because Folks would be living here, they wouldn't be working here, but it would be employing countless people in the construction trade, the architect trade, the legal trade, the banking trade, all of these entities coming together to make this project a reality. And then let's not forget the folks that are going to be living here, 33 apartments, maybe one or two people in each apartment are all going to now work in this community, patronize the local businesses and directly contribute to this local economy. So we're adding 33 new markets on scene, creating a taxable property that for 100 years has never paid $1. And now we have all these people living here with disposable income. So to me, obviously I'm a little bit biased on the topic, but it would be a very attractive proposition um, if I were in their shoes and maybe some type of compromise or adjustment is needed, but to flat out say that it wasn't supported was uh, quite disheartening considering the amount of investment. We're talking millions and millions of dollars. And I'm not born and bred in Winsock and I don't know the history that well, but this is probably one of the largest investments in that area since Abraham Lincoln came back in the Civil War era. And if you don't know about that, you can check that out. Abraham Lincoln did come and visit Woonsocket. He came in on the train. And that was a fundraising event. So you can check that out. And I don't think between then and now, other than maybe schools or government buildings, there's been a private investment of this size. And churches are going to be the next wave, unfortunately, of vacant properties. In my parents' generation, it was the mill buildings. You know, in the 80s, the 90s, a lot of these were shipped overseas. The jobs, the, the labor was cheaper. And now you have these huge mill buildings that are empty. And most of them now, Pawtucket, Providence, Woonsocket, West Warwick, they've been beautifully renovated into residential apartments. So my vision for the churches is the same. The structure is there. The parking lots are typically there. And you just have to outfit inside to create a floor plan and a layout that works. So that's what we would do here. We wouldn't touch the outside. We'd retrofit the inside, 
plenty of parking on site and off site. There's green space. We're using an acre and a half of unused land at the moment and putting some blood into it. Forgive me, I get very excited on this topic, but it was a, uh, a very flip of a coin, I would say, type of meeting when I expected it to be a little bit more pro. And the mayor was there and she spoke out in high favor of the project, which was very nice. And we're very thankful for that. And we just hope that the council will take a look at more of the external contribution that will happen. Yes, it won't directly create jobs. It's not an office structure. We get that. But these are just new people now in the community that weren't there before and wouldn't be there before because this type of housing doesn't exist. It simply doesn't exist. It will probably be one of the nicest housing offerings in the entire city. So we're looking forward to our next meeting with the council, which will be in a few weeks. And what we'll do is we'll update you then on how it went. And uh, also, as you continue your real estate career, consider whatever town, whatever city, whatever state you're in, there's an opportunity to ask for your own TSA if the value of your project is sizable. Now, each city and town has its own definition or kind of guideline for what they want. If it's a $200,000 single family home, there's no need for a tax treaty because if you don't build this property, somebody else will. It's commonplace. There's thousands, tens and thousands of these types of structures. It's not doing anything that's risky or above and beyond or super expensive. And that's the need for the TSA is that in this case, I'm taking a huge risk. I'm putting a lot of trust and faith into the city and they reciprocate by offering a discount, if you will, over a couple year period. In this case, mine was 12, um, to help offset that burden and that cost. So consider that if you have a $2 million structure, maybe an old mill building or an old office building, for example, and you're retrofitting it and spending a lot of time and money, you wanna consider looking into getting that TSA for your specific project. And we'll keep you posted on our progress here so you can learn a little bit more. Once again, Greg Rice here in the bucket, your property managed.